네, 오늘 저희 뉴스에 특별한 손님을 모셨습니다. 한국 조지 메이슨 대학교 분쟁 분석 해결학과에 재직 중이신 보리슬라바 교수님이십니다. Hi, professor. Hi, y u b i n How are you? Um, so it's your first time visiting our broadcasting station, right? Yes, it is, and I'm happy to be here. So uh, you've been devoting your life to this field as a scholar, and I think the Ukraine conflict might have been a pivotal issue in the academics. So what kind of opinions are made in the field right now? Mm, so it's a very good question. Uh, yes, so we, we have been, of course, the scholars of conflict, the peace studies have followed uh, uh, conflicts uh, you know, for, for a long time, and this is the most recent one. Uh, and uh, I mean, there are different opinions about the conflict, but uh, I think the most important thing right now is really uh, to, um, for, the, for, for the violence to stop and, f and for the peace. Uh, to be negotiated and, and the ceasefire as, as soon as possible we, because we really don't want to see people suffering and so much people losing their homes and, and lives, livelihoods uh, and uh, you know, so much destruction that is happening so right now. I also think that it's, it's very important to focus on prevention uh, of, of this and similar conflicts and I think that the field really needs to look at that and, and how we can foster prevention rather than you know, wait and, and react when the, when the conflicts already happen, when the violence emerges. So uh, then let's look at the starting point, the point where the war first triggered. Um, the current Ukrainian government, in fact, has a pro-European tendency. So President Zelensky uh, recently strongly argued that Ukraine is going to join the NATO and uh, Ukraine joining to the NATO. I think this has been very uh, problematic in Russia and this triggered a war. And what does NATO mean for, how does it affect Russia? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure that I can speak from the point of view of Russians, but uh, what I heard from the interviews uh, of, the, of the Russian president is that uh, Russia considers NATO coming to Ukraine as, uh, and Ukraine becoming part of the NATO as a red line, uh, which, uh, and um, they see it as a security threat. Uh, so that is something that, is, uh, that he has been talking about for a long time. And um, um, I, I think that that, that that must be one of the uh, causes and uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. precipitating things that actually uh, made him do this. But uh, again, I, I cannot speak from the point of view of Russians. Uh, that's what I heard uh, from the interview. Um, Yes, yeah, so, but w what, what I'm hearing recently from what uh, President Zelensky is saying that, uh, and other world leaders is uh, actually that uh, Ukraine is, is moving away from that tendency as being a member of NATO. Uh, so we will see how that will impact uh, the peace negotiations. We definitely need to seek for a resolution for this war. And It reminds me the case of Camp David when Jimmy Carter uh, succeed in making a solution for the conflict between Egypt and Israel. And do you think a mediator can intervene in this situation? So I'm glad you mentioned this case that we actually did in the class. Right, right. <laughs> And it's, it's, a, it's a case of a, of a, a, a successful mediation process between two countries that were in conflict. Uh, now, uh, we have already uh, negotiations underway uh, and um, Turkey uh, is, uh, has taken on the role of a mediator, so President Erdogan uh, and um, the Turkish diplomats, so they, they are helping uh, in this uh, process. Uh, well, it remains again to be seen uh, how successful they will be. Uh, there are also some offers from um, uh, Israel uh, to also serve as a mediator. 
uh, in this conflict. Again, uh, it remains to be seen. And uh, I mean, it's what we know is that, you know, mediators um, need to be third parties who are trusted by, by right. both parties right. and who are who will be working with the, with the parties for some kind of a compromise and fair solution. So, so is the negotiation with uh, Turkey and Israel going on? Like, are they con contacting Putin? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So this is underway. Mm -hmm. oh, it's interesting. And also deprivation and human needs is getting serious in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. People are losing their hometown, their family, and their countries. So among these, what is your biggest concern for Ukraine after the war? Well, uh, I mean, the biggest concern is really at now, at, in this moment, that what we see is that there is a lot of um, indiscriminate uh, destruction. Uh, a lot of people are, are being killed, um, and there is an enormous um, refugee crisis. Right. So people are just leaving uh, Ukraine, leaving their homes, m like more than four million people. So this is a serious uh, humanitarian crisis, and, and it, it, I mean, it was just more, more than a month, and, and all of this destruction happened. So I'm just <laughs> worried about what will happen if this war continues. So uh, we, I mean, we really need to uh, first work on, on stopping this direct violence and this, this uh, hot conflict, as we call it. And, uh, help the people uh, who are displaced um, and then in the you know in the aftermath of conflict start uh, you know rebuilding mm -hmm. uh, everything so this should be the, the the goal right now immediate goal but i think ceasefire is necessary as as a first step uh, and this negotiation uh, i think it should be the focus of all world leaders you know for this negotiation to be successful also, I'm aware that trauma healing is an important factor in the CAR field. Then how can we heal the wounds of the refugees or the people in Ukraine? After the violence ends, there, there is this long process of, of, of healing. And, uh, you know, here we have, th then we have, you know, different, we can have different approaches, different programs for, for trauma healing. So uh, what is your personal suggestion to the war in Ukraine as a scholar? My personal suggestion is for, for it to stop <laughs> as, as mm -hmm. soon as possible. And uh, one of the main things that we learn in our field in conflict resolution is that conflicts, um, we need to learn how to deal with conflicts constructively. There will always be conflicts in the world, okay? But um, we, as, as a hum humanity, uh, we should move to this uh, more developed consciousness and thinking uh, that, that, that would you know, lead us to deal with conflicts through diplomacy, through, through some kind of negotiation, through some kind of prevention, not stubbornness, compromise, mm -hmm. um, uh, smart, soft power diplomacy, rather than, than use, use of weapons, you know. So my hope is that after this conflict, that these main parties and also great powers will sit and talk and, and discuss uh, how, what is this new arrangement uh, in the international system that can ensure peace, that they don't attack each other because I mean, this, this, this war and similar wars can easily lead to uh, a very uh, terrible uh, outcomes, mm -hmm. such as uh, use of nuclear, nuclear weapons and, and other you know, terrible things. So we don't really want th this to happen. We, we shouldn't, you, you, like especially young generations, you shouldn't be uh, you know, exposed uh, right. to this kind of uh, things, these kind of events. So we would think that, <coughs> you know, with the evo evolution of society, that we would have less wars. But we still, we're still engaging in wars, uh, especially these great powers are engaging in wars. And, uh, you know, we had Syria, we had mm -hmm. Libya, we had Iraq, and so on. We had war after war. 
this is just one in the series of, of, of these horrible conflicts and we should not forget it. Uh, so my hope is that we can, that these great powers can work together and, and find some different way of dealing with their um, problems and, and issues that they have with each other. So we have our last question left. And lastly, uh, related to this war in Ukraine, do you have anything to mention for the students in IGC? Well, I, I just, uh, I'm so glad that uh, we have such great students uh, as, uh, as you, as yourself, <laughs> and you. uh, <laughs> that you are interested and you, you're part of this uh, uh, you know, field. And uh, I just, and you are the future of this field. And, and you know, it is great to see that you will learn all of these uh, important concepts that will help you affect policy in the future. So I, I, I would like to see all of you uh, doing some important work, maybe in journalism, maybe in uh, diplomacy, in this government, in uh, civil society, wherever you will be working you know, you will carry with yourself, hopefully, what we taught you <laughs> in, in, from our field. So, uh, I mean, it's just great to see that you're so engaged. And, uh, yeah, I, I really look forward to seeing what, what next you will do, all of you. Okay, I guess we're done for our interview. Uh, it was a very great pleasure to have you. Thank you, Professor, again. Thank you. It was Thank my you. pleasure. <laughs> mm -hmm.